Hi everyone and welcome along to the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, the podcast that aims to help you reduce and even eliminate work-related discomfort. I'm your host Neve Pentney of Boyne Ergonomics. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're able to take away some useful practical advice from this podcast to help you reduce your own risk of discomfort at the workplace or help manage the risks among the people that you might be responsible for. So now that we know why we're here, let's get started. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 29 of the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, where today I'm going to be talking to you about what we can do to reduce elbow, wrist and hand discomfort at the workstation. This discomfort can happen in any job, but it is becoming a little bit more prevalent, I found in my own experience, in desk-based computer jobs. Just because of the increased time that we're spending at the computer, and what I have found to be an increased use of the keyboard and mouse. There are a number of terms that you will hear to describe any kind of discomfort in this area, and it could be that it's called carpal tunnel syndrome, it might be cubital tunnel syndrome, fractures, tendonitis, nerve injuries, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. Of course, these are usually caused by a combination of factors, but whether it's caused by something outside of work or it's caused by something that's wrong at the workstation. Either way, it needs to be addressed in the workplace to reduce the discomfort that's experienced there. So as always, what I'm going to do is have a look at the risks which fall under your static postures, adverse postures, repetitive postures and contact stress. And then we're going to have a look at what we can do to reduce the likelihood of developing discomfort in the elbow, wrist and hand. So if we look at your prolonged desk-based posture. So as you'll know, if anyone has listened to the episode on low back and leg discomfort or the upper back, shoulder and neck discomfort, you'll know, and it's the same again, prolonged static postures, wherever they may be, whatever they might be, involve continuous contraction of the muscles. And this continuous contraction, along with reduced circulation, increases the amount of waste products that build up in the muscle and also reduces the amount of oxygen and nutrients that go to the muscle. This causes fatigue, discomfort, inflammation, and this can contribute to the aches and pains at the desk. When we're at the desk, if we look at the upper back, neck and the shoulders, these areas can get inflamed. And of course, that can cause discomfort in those areas, which we talked about in the the episode about that. But it can also feed down and cause discomfort into the elbow, wrist and hand. Because if these muscles are getting inflamed and we have underlying conditions or there's something up with a disc or anything like that, this inflammation can impact the nerve that feeds into that hand and into the arm. And this can cause discomfort. So even though the inflammation might be higher up, it can cause discomfort in the elbow, wrist or hand. And the other factor to consider when we think about prolonged desk-based postures is if you're at the desk for a long time, whether you're sitting or whether you're standing, well, you're increasing your exposure to the other risk factors that we're going to talk about. So your repetitive movements, your adverse postures, your contact stress, your By being at the desk for longer, you're increasing your exposure to these other factors. So prolonged desk-based positions, sitting or standing, is going to have an impact on these other risk factors. Now, the next one we're going to look at is repetitive movement. So when it comes to the elbow, the wrist and the hand, the repetitive movements that we see are normally associated with typing and using the mouse. And this continuous or prolonged repetitive movements without breaks and especially if other factors are present can cause inflammation of the tendons and can cause fatigue in the forearm muscle and this can cause discomfort. The next risk factor we're going to look at is adverse postures. So again adverse postures are any posture that puts excessive strain on a particular area of the musculoskeletal system and usually present at the computer workstation because of poor positioning the wrong equipment, fatigue, and just poor habits. The most common one that I see at the desk that can increase the risk of discomfort in the elbow, wrist, and hand is usually related to seated height or standing height relative to the surface. So if you are seated too low for the desk and you let the shoulder relax, what tends to happen is you'll have flexion at the wrist, a forward bend at the wrist relative to your forearm. And that can impact, of course, blood flow into the hand. And 
when you're seated too high or if the desk is too low for you when you're standing. What can happen instead is actually the forearm drops down, slopes down or from the elbow and then the wrist extends backward when you're typing and using the mouse. So this wrist extension can actually impact um, contact stress as well and really affect circulation and tension in the area. General standard keyboard mouse design can cause adverse postures. So just by using your normal keyboard and mouse, you do pronate the forearm. So you wrote, you turn the forearm inward so that your hands can be flat. We call this pronation. And this itself increases the strain on the tissues at the elbow and down into the wrist. And that is an impact of standard equipment design. Mouse position is also a cause of adverse postures. For example, if you use a mouse that is the wrong size for your hand, particularly if it's too small, if you don't hold the mouse properly, or if you have the mouse position too far from you, well, this can cause poor postures that can impact the elbow, the wrist, and the hand. Having the keyboard and mouse too far from you too when you're seated can cause you to lean forward and reach forward, and that can impact posture of the elbow, wrist, and hand. All these put excessive strain on the tissues and increase the likelihood that you're going to get some discomfort. And the last area, which is one that's really common with this particular set of issues, is contact stress. There's a number of sources of contact stress at the workstation that's going to impact the elbow, the wrist and the hand. One is contact stress between the wrist and the desk surface. And another one is the forearm and the edge of the desk. And the other is contact between the elbow and the armrest. So contact stress between the wrist and the desk surface is usually present if you hold a mouse wrong. So if you hold it in the fingers instead of the palm. If you use a mouse that's too small for your hand. If you're using a mouse pad with a wrist rest, the little gel or foam rest on the end. And then poor positioning of the keyboard rest or using the keyboard with the back raised on its legs. So our keyboard should be flat. All of these cause contact between the wrist and the table. And if you think about the wrist, it is such a small area, but it's so full of bones and nerves and tendons and blood vessels that any increase in contact, any prolonged contact is going to cause a problem because it's going to have a negative impact on the nerves and the tendons and the blood flow. Contact stress between the edge of the desk and the forearm is usually present if, like I said before, in other episodes, if you're sitting too low for the desk and you let the shoulder relax, well, then the edge of the desk is going to start to be in contact with the forearm. That can get really uncomfortable and painful and can cause kind of neurological symptoms and circulation systems in the hand. If the desk is too high for you when you're standing, this can also happen. So those are the risk factors that are present that can cause elbow, wrist or hand or certainly contribute to elbow, wrist or hand discomfort. So what can we do about them? Well, when it comes to the first one, your prolonged postures, my advice is the same no matter whether it's sitting or standing, no matter what the issue is, prolonged desk-based posture is always going to be a risk factor. So what do we do? Well, we have to reduce our exposure. We have to take regular micro breaks from the desk at least once every 45 minutes. It doesn't have to be for very long, which is why we call them micro breaks. It just needs to be a change in position away from the desk, go get a glass of water. If, if you're in the office getting up to a printer, go chat to a colleague, go walk a lap and sit back down. But it's so, so important that we do this to let the limbs relax, to activate the muscles that are not working when we sit, to rest the ones that are working when we sit and to re- rejuvenate and restore, that's the word, circulation, to get rid of those waste products and feed our muscles with the oxygen and the nutrients that they need. If you're using a sit-stand workstation, of course, change your posture frequently. But standing at the desk is not the same as a micro break, especially when we think of the elbows, the wrists and the hand. You're doing all the same things. You're still using the keyboard. You're still using the mouse. So the exposure is still there. So take regular breaks. Using the desk in a standing position for a meeting is a great way to get a little bit extra mobility without using the keyboard and mouse. But it's still not a substitute for a micro break. And there's lots of things we can do to increase movement, especially at home. But definitely move as much as you can. To reduce repetitive movements, again, 
Your micro breaks will help because it provides relief from these repetitive movements. When you're operating the mouse, especially if you are moving windows between different screens, allow the arm to move the mouse to avoid these repetitive wrist deviations that we see now with the larger mouse movements. What I will say is the computer mouse now is so sensitive. The optic mouse is so much more sensitive than the old style roller mouses used to be. Mouse devices, can't never remember how to say that, but it's much more sensitive. So actually, if you're navigating your cursor around one screen, there's usually very little hand movement needed. Realistically, when you look at it, and when I watch people using the mouse and they're, they're navigating around one screen, there's not a whole lot of movement in the wrist. The risk though now presents itself when we have multiple screens. And if you're clicking and dragging around multiple areas, that's where I see these big wrist deviations. And that's where you should let the hand take over. And let the arm, sorry, take over and have the movements between the screens done using the arm instead of using the wrist. Consider alternating the hand that operates the mouse to provide relief to the dominant hand. This is really, really difficult. Funnily, a lot of left-handed people I speak to use the mouse with the right hand, but very few right-handers use the mouse with the left. And anyone I've met that does, it's as a consequence of having carpal tunnel syndrome or some serious issue. Most right-handed people are very, very right-handed and they find it very difficult to use the mouse with the left hand, but you can get there. You can learn it. So give it a try, definitely. Or have a look at different kind of mouse devices like you can get finger operated trackball mouse is a particular favorite of mine because it doesn't put excessive strain on the thumb but that reduces repetitive miss movements because actually the tracker ball the trackball mouse it doesn't move itself the actual device stays in the one position but you can it's your hand and your arm that move as you're operating it so you don't get repetitive wrist deviation so definitely it's, it's a good one to look at if it's something you're experiencing. And of course, the vertical mouse, everyone knows I'm a big fan of vertical mouse as a way of um, reducing the risk. And when you're typing, move your hands across the keyboard. Do not drop the wrists on the table and deviate from the hands. Actually move your hand across the keyboard. Use a keyboard rest if you want, but make sure the keyboard rest is sitting tight up against the keyboard underneath your palms and not on the wrist. To reduce your adverse postures, well, firstly, as before, make sure you're the right height for any surface you're using or the surface is the right height for you. If the screens are at the right height, well, that's going to help you yourself maintain a nice upright position ear over shoulder. If you're using a laptop or a tablet, make sure that's elevated. Keep the keyboard, the mouse and anything that you use a lot quite close to you. so You're not reaching. Use your keyboard in the flat position to reduce adverse postures of the wrist when typing. If you use the mouse of the right and you're using a standard keyboard, well, I'd look at swapping to the compact keyboard so your mouse is in line with your shoulder. And if you need to use a numeric pad, well, then get a separate one that you can put on the left hand side. If you are having symptoms, have a look at some of the tented and split keyboards or a vertical or a joystick mouse to reduce the pronation in the forearm. So to reduce that forward twist in the forearm associated with standard devices and it helps to maintain a more natural forearm posture and also reduce contact stress. I have um, a blog post and a podcast episode where we do actually there's two different ones where we look specifically at different keyboards and at different mouse devices. Have a look at that or have a listen to that if you are having symptoms because there's so many options to choose from but I find a tented keyboard and a vertical mouse are normally a good start good starting point and this will help reduce tension and strain in the upper limbs that will impact the elbow the wrist and the hand and the final thing to look at is your contact stress so to reduce contact stress that might be causing symptoms of wrist and hand make sure you're the right height for the desk or the desk is the right height for you so it reduces contact between the forearm and the wrist and the table use your keyboard in the flat position and make sure you're using the right size mouse for your hand. Again, there is a guide on the episode and the blog post about the mouse on how you can size your mouse. And make sure you're holding it in your palm and not your fingers. Because this will help to create a natural little bit of space between your wrist and the table. So you don't have that contact. And actually using a mouse pad can be helpful in creating the space. But not the one with the gel or the foam wrist rest. That actually does the opposite. 
and can encourage contact stress and encourage adverse postures. But using a normal mouse pad helps to just raise your wrist by a couple of millimeters off the table, but it's enough to reduce the contact stress. So that's what we can do. Those are the risk factors. That's what we can do to reduce them. My most important thing with these ones is that you report any symptoms early. In a lot of cases, when I'm doing ergonomic risk assessments with somebody with carpal tunnel syndrome or somebody with tennis elbow, it's normally been going on a few months before I actually get in there to the workstation to make the changes that will help. And by that case, they've normally had to go to physio or go to the doctor and they're receiving treatment. And in a lot of cases, this could be avoided. So definitely, if you are experiencing symptoms in the elbow, the wrist, the hand or anywhere, let your employer know as soon as possible and get an ergonomic risk assessment carried out. So you can try and nip any risk factors there quite early on and either reduce the impact that they have on you or eliminate them as a risk altogether so that you can focus on what might be going on in the background that could be causing the problem. There's a lot of factors in and out of work that could be causing discomfort in the elbow, wrist or hand, but definitely reducing your exposure to the risks in the workplace will help and can go a long way to help. So that is our episode on discomfort and how we can reduce it when it occurs in the elbow, the wrist and the hand. The next episode is going to be the last episode for 2022 and we're going to have a look at reducing fatigue and discomfort associated with virtual meetings because even though the offices are open these are still a really big feature of the workday for a lot of people so we're going to have a look at that the in the show notes I'll have a link of course to the blog post associated with this episode and I'll have all my social media handles and my email address if anyone wants to link in or send me suggestions for next year I've got a couple on the list but anyone has any suggestions of something you would like me to cover in 2023 please get in touch and let me know as always, I never think to ask, but I will. I've remembered now. If you know anyone that is experiencing discomfort at the workstation or has just happened to mention any issues or pain that they're having, feel free to direct them here to the, to the podcast or to my website, to my blogs. Loads of information there that could be really useful for somebody if they're having a problem. And until next time, everybody stay well and I will talk to you soon. <laughs>